In this video, I'm going to give you a basic overview of dealing with RL circuits. Now, I went into a lot of depth with RC circuits. I'm going to try to just show the highlights here because a lot of what we learned for RC circuits applies here. And I'll leave you in your textbook to delve into the details. So let's begin. I have here a circuit, three resistors, one inductor, and there's a switch that uh, basically connects R1 to R2 or R3. It's in position so that it connects R1 and R3 at time zero, and actually for all times less than zero. At time zero, it switches so that R2 is connected, and we're asked to find the current through the inductor as a function of time for t greater than zero. So this is where the overview comes in. Basically, what we're looking for is the current in time. So through steady state analysis, we can identify an initial state and a final state. And then with transient analysis, we'll find out what's going on to connect those two. So it looks something like this. So we're going to know an initial value, an infinity value, so after a long time. And then our job will be to connect the transition in here somehow. Later we'll see that this is going to be an exponential. But let's at least start out uh, with the initial and final conditions. So as you can already see in this picture, we need the steady state conditions. So for the initial condition, I've drawn a circuit here in pink. And what you'll be able to see here is that the current IS flows through R1. And then in steady state, all of IS is going to go this way. And there's no current going this way. So really, it's just IS. So just left of 0, that's I0 minus. We have IS. Now, Inductor current cannot change instantaneously. On the other hand, the inductor voltage, the voltage across the inductor can, but that's beside the point. That means then that I L zero is equal to I L zero minus. And so that'll be useful for our calculation. In steady state, after the switch has been flipped, R2 is no longer in the circuit, but R3 is, and the inductor and R3 have been isolated from the rest of the circuit. So that's all that we'll have going on here. Now, as I L gets pushed through R3, eventually that inductor is going to discharge so that in the long term, in steady state, we're going to have I L be zero. Now, we use the green circuit to determine the transient, what's happening in between. So we'll use Kirchhoff's voltage law. We'll recognize that this is IL, and so we could label a voltage here, plus minus IL R3. So we start off with KVL here, in this middle zone here, transient. And then we can also recognize, because this is an inductor, that VL may be written like this. That's the current voltage relationship for an inductor. So we'll write this. And then putting this in the form that we like for differential equations, we'll write. OK, at this point, I could use the integrating factor technique. I showed you this in a capacitor analysis. But I'm going to do something slightly different just to give you a different perspective. It's equivalent. So I can rewrite this as follows. In this form, it suggests that the derivative of the current is proportional to the current itself. So I would ask you then, what function is proportional to its own derivative? That's what we're looking for. Take a moment to think about that. So sines and cosines are, but there's another more elementary function than those, and that's the exponential. So for example, if this is our function where a is a constant and alpha is a constant and t is the running variable, well, we know what df dt is. 
So you can see here that the function is in fact proportional to its derivative. That's the exponential. We identify this right here as our f of t. Okay, so here above we have i l. So basically then, what we could assume is that i l is in fact an exponential. So being that this is i l, if we compare this to above here, we're going to see then that alpha has to be negative r3 over l. And the other thing is, well, we don't know what alpha is, and so how do we figure that out? Well, we uh, use the initial and final conditions. So basically we need i l0. So we know that much, and it needs to be i s. So if we plug in t equals 0 here, we're going to get a and then e to the 0, right, because t is 0. That's 1, so we're just left with a. So we just learned that i s is equivalent to a. So now we've engineered this, so we get the initial condition, and we can verify that our final condition is satisfied. Right, we now know i l t. And so i l of infinity, well, when you plug in infinity here, that exponential goes to zero. So what we're saying here is we've got this. Because i l at infinity is zero, I draw the line here. And because we know of the exponential decay here, we're going to try to sketch an exponential decay. Maybe it looks like a state, straight line, but it's supposed to be an exponential decay. And I'll just put here, this is proportional to. And I'll just put here that this is i s e to negative r3 l t. So initial condition, final condition, stitched together using an exponential. And so this actually maps onto a thing we did before with the capacitor, it matches the same thing. For a capacitor, we had this equation here. Well, it was slightly different with a VC instead of an IL. We could engineer it so it's like this. We're generalizing it, where IL need not be infinity. So we're going to use steady state analysis to get IL 0 minus and IL infinity. We're going to get IL 0 from IL 0 minus. And because the inductor current can't change instantaneously or abruptly, it retains its value just before the switch and during the switch and just after the switch. And then, of course, that's when the exponential decay begins. Keep in mind, we're now generalizing, right? In the previous example, we had IL infinity being 0, but here it can actually be any number. And I'm not going to go through the circuit analysis on that, but uh, here's the idea, right? So putting it all together, we start with our infinite value, and then we add the following. So what happens here, right, is that the final condition, IL infinity, is designed to cancel out when t goes to 0, right? So if you plug in t 0, the exponential goes to 1, and then so we're just left with IL 0. And if t goes to infinity, that exponential goes to 0, and so we're just left with IL infinity, and that's what we wanted. And again, reminding you, what's this tau? Well, tau is uh, 1 over alpha, right? See here, alpha? So negative 1 over tau is equal to alpha, which means that tau is L over R3, and this negative sign gives exponential decay. So to summarize, let's just write a few things here. First things first, for the RL, we know that it's like this. Okay, so notice here that the current for an inductor and the voltage for a capacitor have the same form. You get the initial and final conditions from steady state, and then you 
stitch them together using an exponential that satisfies the initial and final conditions. On the other hand, the current for the capacitor, well, you can get this as follows. So you can have a mathematical expression. And then also for the voltage across the inductor. And the other thing that we'll note here is that this doesn't change instantaneously. And that these two can change instantaneously. The other thing I need to point out is that uh, the tau for the RC case is resistance times capacitance, and the time constant tau for the RL case, that's the resistor and the inductor, is L over R. And that's the basics behind finding the current or voltage as a function of time in an RL or an RC circuit. So the idea is that the initial and final conditions are obtained using steady state analysis, and then you need to find the time constant, and then you can combine everything. So uh, that is exactly what we did in this picture. And we'll say that for all intents and purposes, this is five time constants. Okay, I hope that helps give you an overview of the uh, RL circuit problem, resistor and inductor. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Thanks, and have a great day. Good luck with circuits or the FE prep.